For the vast majority of us, the recession has seriously affected our ability to buy shit we don't need and ply ourselves silly with alcohol in a vain effort to forget how completely miserable our situation is. With the cost of living now so high, even our beloved Queen is moonlighting at McDonald's, we're living in a time where, despite significant breakthroughs in manufacturing and technology, we can't even afford to fix the crumbling ruins of our fallen empire. Sure, there are builders, bricklayers, architects and other craftsmen, and sure, we've made significant advantages in design, logistics and pretty much every other area of our understanding of the world, but nobody can do anything because they don't have any money. The problem started when the semi-fraudulent subprime scheme came inevitably to the only logical conclusion it could and erupted like a BP oil rig, destroying everything in its path. When greedy corporations are basically just allowed to invent money like a demented monopoly banker, only the naive are surprised when they have a head-on collision with reality and it becomes terrifyingly obvious that this money doesn't actually exist. The system of banking is like a game of musical chairs. Every so often, someone will lose their seat in the financial world because there simply aren't enough chairs to go around. Then the banks demonise those who default on their loans when they are the ones taking the chairs away. So, with the alleged money Geddon threatening to doom us all to a life of toil and servitude, the large financial institutions that brought the entire global economy to its knees must surely be feeling the pinch of some of these hardships, right? The Royal Bank of Scotland and that West both bailed out and now sub subsequently both state-owned took devastating losses last year. The tax pounds you have worked so hard for just evaporated into nothingness like a collapsed star it sucked everything in in its vicinity. Royal Bank of Scotland lost over £1 billion, which is the equivalent of the annual income of nearly 40,000 typical British families. And out of this absurdity comes a greater injustice still. Despite the crushing losses, the publicly owned firm has decided to award itself £950 million in bonuses with all of the lovely money from the bailout. Chief Executive Stephen Hester is in line for a whopping £7.7 .7 million bonus, and he deserves every penny of it. Because let's be honest, all those private jets, Olympic-sized swimming pools, and golden bathtubs filled with caviar don't come cheap. The elites have a life so decadent that even self-acclaimed master of ignorance Kanye West would think it a bit much. Banks are systemically exploitative. The recent bonuses and glaring lack of culpability are only surface expressions of an inner darkness that runs through the lifeblood of these corrupt and unnecessary institutions. These criminals basically charge you for a product that doesn't exist and cost them nothing to produce other than the insignificant fraction of paper and cheap metal that represent these numbers in a spreadsheet. For those of you who may be unfamiliar with the fundamental principles of banking, don't despair because hiding behind the staggeringly complex and obfuscating bureaucracy, there lies a very simple principle. Exploitation. The thin veil of legitimacy boasted by these financial terrorists has been torn asunder, and more and more people are beginning to realise the insult to both our ethical principles and the most rudimentary economic logic that banking poses. Yes, there are bad banks, and yes, there are worse banks, and not all of the banks have the audacity to pay their shareholders so handsomely in a time of economic turmoil, but our anger should not be focused on this one specific CEO or bank, but it should be directly questioning the needs for these exploitation machines in the first place.